let me let you in on a little secret. Something the rich have done that the Naya just haven't mastered yet. So you've probably been told the same stories from society. You work hard, you save, you don't overspend, and you know when you retire, you can retire pretty comfortably. And while that's generally good advice, it's not specific enough. And also, it really isn't how you build wealth. See, what you might think how someone gets rich is they build a product or service, they sell it, or they invest in real estate, or they take some big risk, right? They, 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 they bet it all on something. However, that generally isn't the case. All those things can get you wealth. If they do, it's almost tangential, meaning that they're not, it's not doing the heavy lifting. And here's why. So say you have a product or service you sell, and you're really good at it. Like, you start to become really successful. You'll make a fair bit of income, but, and it'll be, it'll be nice. However, there will be a cap, meaning this, it's going to be a limit on how much you can make. And it's pretty simple. You only have so many hours in a day, and there's only so much work you can do. So even if you're making good money, it'll probably ever, always ever stay good money. See, what you have to do is exploit, I mean, leverage other people's labor and time. Once you do this, you know, have other people put in the work for you, you can start to actually amass some wealth. And once you do this enough, you'll be pretty set. However, there's really a step above this. It's kind of the true secret. See, the true secret isn't this, because this is something you can find in 100 articles. The true secret is getting everyone else to believe that you work for it in the same way they did. See, if you can get them to believe that if they toil, that the toiling that they do, that gets them meager scraps to survive, is the same way you work to fund your yachts and mansions, then you're pretty set in maintaining it. Because now you have relatability to the common person. Relatability you don't share, but nevertheless, you can cultivate. Now, there's a way to go a step above this. We're more than just convincing. See, you've probably heard of something called the scarcity mindset. And generally, you've heard it and used in a negative term. But for us, in this scenario, it's very important. We actually want this. So how do we actually cultivate the scarcity mindset? I mean, simple thing is you create scarcity. And artificial scarcity be exact. So, what you do is you make resources hard to come by, even though they're really relatively available, like food and water. You make things like medicine, which generally is probably cheap and overhead to produce, preposterously expensive. And you gotta also make sure wages don't grow, and you also kinda wanna make sure that, you know, the cost of living and inflation grow as a counter to that. And with these ingredients, you'll generally have a swath of the population stuck in a scarcity mindset. Now, this is good and all, but it goes even one step further. If you want to really maximize, if you want to make the most out of you can and, and maintain it the best way you can, what you do want to do, do with the wealth you have amassed is you want to donate to right-wing politicians. And you want to go right-wing because they'll generally give you lower taxes. But what they'll also do is once they get into office, they'll neuter every social program that there is. And they'll usually slash funding for that too. Those both go hand in hand. Then they'll increase government spending. That doesn't change because obviously you got to increase military spending. So once they increase that, and once those taxes increase because there's only those who pay for it, you don't have to worry about it going to you. It goes to everyone else. So now... When they're struggling just to get by, they had to lose even more money, and because they don't know where to look for it, they'll point the finger at the government, and they won't look at you. And also, when it comes time to tax you, you can cry those talk it out of tears, and you'll have people who, and you can relate to any day of the week, defend you, put their lives on the line, in, way, in, in ways you would never do for them. 
And once you've done that, you've kind of set. So I hope this lesson has kind of helped you in really climbing up to that 1%. Well, I think this has been an interesting video. I hope this helped. And as all you know, I'm Jay. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And remember, any food tastes good when seasoned. This includes the ranch.